As a champion designer, what would you say is a must-have for someone in the role? Is creativity, or is there some kind of specific fundamental knowledge required that you can learn in the sector regardless of the game? So, uh, if you say designer, uh, th something I'll notice is that if you say, what do you need to know to be a designer, that's very different from what you need to know to be a champion designer. One of the things I've noticed over the years is that champion design is a very, very specific and specific skill set. Um, and some of really, really good designers have tried making champions and not been successful at it. Whereas some of our best champion designers have been just really, really fresh people that don't have any design experience. Some of our best champions were made by like associate level or mid-level champion designers. Whereas sometimes you'll see a principal designer try to make a champion and they won't be very successful at it. And so champion design specifically, I'd say is a very like specific skill set that is hard to really train elsewhere. But some things I would say about it is, some things I would say about it is champion design uh, requires, I think the number one thing is problem solving. It's the ability to understand and uh, what the problems are with the thing you're doing and how to fix them. This is hard because sometimes it's hard to identify the problems. Like I was talking earlier in the stream about one of my reasons I was doing poorly at the start of my career is that I couldn't like take feedback very well. So people would tell me this is a problem and I'd be like, they just don't get it, right? And it's like, so, but that's hard though because you also, the thing about taking feedback is it's really important when you take feedback that you're able to like parse out what the issues are. But it's also really important that you just don't take all feedback at face value. Because a risk when you're making a game like League or Valorant or whatever is that it's really easy to give feedback of like, that thing was different and I don't like it, right? And so you really a really important skill as a designer is being able to parse feedback and understand that the feedback that is negative that you should act on and the feedback that is negative that you should ex like just accept that it's going to be that way. Um, and the feedback that is negative that like you should fix in a different way than they suggest, right? Like um, one of the a classic thing I hear in design in generally is like players will tell you what they want. They won't tell you what they need. And, and this is the idea that like, as an example, um, when Jin came out and he was weak, I got a lot, um, he, he was weak after we nerfed him a bit. I legitimately got a lot of Jin players who were telling me, August, Jin sucks because he has a reload. Remove the reload and you'll fix the character. And what they were telling me that they wanted, right, is they, they wanted their reload gone so they could be a good character, right? But what they needed was Jin to be viable, right? Like it wasn't that they needed the reload gone. It's that they needed Jin to be a viable character and there were so many different ways to make Jin a viable character, right? And so sometimes when people give you feedback, they'll tell you like, here's this thing that's wrong and delete it and it'll be fine or do it this way and it'll be fine. But sometimes it's like, well, the root of the feedback is correct. There is something wrong. There is something that needs to be fixed, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should just delete it or do something like you got to figure out the right solution to the problem and so i think uh one thing i would say that's important about champion design and design in general is problem solving being able to identify problems and then figure out the best ways to fix them another thing that i think is very important in design for champions specifically is the ability to make thematically cohesive characters that feel good to play so this is kind of the idea that how to say it um Let's say I make a character with a pet dragon, okay? There are ways you could make that character that the pet dragon feels like a dragon. And there are ways you could make that character that the pet dragon feels like a dragon-shaped missile. Does that, that make sense, the difference there? there? There are ways that a pet dragon can feel truly like a dragon, but there's also ways that visually look like a dragon but don't feel like a dragon and just feel like like... You, it's a missile that's a dragon, or it's a, it breathes fire, but uh, it doesn't feel like the dragon is breathing fire. It feels like uh, it's just a, it's an AOE created by your character, right? And so it's kind of the idea that just like, just because a, me a mechanic looks like something does not necessarily mean it feels like something. And being able to like make that stuff cohesive with each other, I think is pretty important to like design, design characters. Uh, that, that feels fairly important. Um, another thing that's really, really hard, but very important, I think, is designing champions to be played as. And the reason this is hard is that champions in a multiplayer game, they need to be fair, right? It's important that if I ship Zeri, <laughs> that character is fair. 
and there's all these things I can do that will make Zeri unfair, which will then result in us having to nerf her 50,000 times, right? So, like, Zeri is an example of, like, the, the bad result of making a character that might be unfair in certain ways. But, and this is very important, it is very easy then to fall into the trap of making a character that is designed to be played against and not designed to be played as. And the problem with making a character that's designed to be played, exclusively designed to be played against, is a character like that probably will have a hard time finding an audience. Because when people are playing a character, they're playing a character to like play the character, to have fun on the character. And if their experience is all about what their opponents can do to them, they need to be able to, uh, to discern what they can do to their opponents, right? And so this isn't saying that you should make characters deliberately unfair, by the way. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that it is really important to be able to know where you can push the power of a character, where you can say, this is something the character does that's unfair. And here's the things they do that make that okay. And that's really, really hard. And I don't think anybody does it perfectly, but I think it's a very important thing to be able to do as, as a champion designer is, is try to find the things that are going to be unfair about your character and crazy about your character and silly about your character and pushed about your character and then try to find the things that make it okay. And that's really hard because if you go too far on the one end, you get a character who's just very unfair. This is Zeri. Like, as an example with Zeri, the thing that I thought would make Zeri okay was that she did so little damage. My idea on Zeri was, it was actually pretty similar to Ezreal. It's like, I'm going to make a very, very mobile character that can just run circles around you. And that will be okay because she's really, really low damage. And shows she's like a mosquito. It'll take her forever to kill you, but she's really mobile. And that was like my bet on Zeri. And that bet turned out poorly. That bet was turned out that uh, Zeri's ultimate says, I don't care if I do little damage because I will be in the fight infinitely and eventually kill all of you, right? That's what a Zeri's ultimate says. And so it actually made it so that even though her damage was terrible, which by on the release, Zeri's had very weak damage on release, even though her damage was weak, she still had this trump card that made it not really matter. And so that's what happens on one end is you make a character that's too... Um, too too fair to play against. Sorry, too unfair to play against. But on the other end, you can make a character that people play it, and they're like, I don't get why I would play this. I have to work twice as hard for everything. This isn't fair. Because it turns out that most characters in the game, they do things that are just for them. And so like as an example of this is Talia, when she came out originally, had worked ground as a punishment system. Talia's original worked ground said, did you stay here? What's wrong with you? Don't do that. You're supposed to move. And the problem with that is no one else had to jump through that hoop. No one else had to say, oh, I stayed in the same place. I just, I just I'm just bad now, right? Um, and so Talia, like Talia was this spell that basically said, if you have to jump through the, the hoops that the designer has put on you, the designer has said like, hey, here's this gameplay that I want you to do. But then the reward wasn't much more than anybody else. And so when a player would play Talia, they'd be like, I'm working so hard, but then I have this punishment system that nobody else has to deal with, and that's not fair, right? Um, Talia's E, originally when it came out, it said, I hurt people who dash. But then if you played Talia and someone dashed through your E, they'd still just kill you. And so it was just kind of this thing where it's like, hey, my E says it's good at something, but actually Yasuo doesn't care. Actually, Kha'Zix doesn't care. Actually, all these characters don't care that this E doesn't actually stop them from killing me, right? Like, and it's another thing where it's like, that's fair, but also it, it was another thing that like, if you played Talia, it was like, well, this isn't actually working for me. It's not doing things that I need. And so on one hand, it's like Talia E that doesn't work against Yasuo feels like it's not really for Talia. And then... Now we have Talia e that does work against Yasuo, and then it's on the other end where it's like, now Yasuo is like, dang, this character's unfair. Like, I, she freaking makes it so I can't dash on her. And it's like, which one of those is correct? And you gotta try to find, like, the, the point in the middle. And so, mainly what I'm getting at here is, I think one really important part about a design, being a champion, a character designer, in like a competitive game like League, is being able to understand 
where you can push the power on your character and then also understand where you can give up power to make that okay. And it's really, really hard and no one is perfect at it. Because the other thing you have to consider is usually when you're pushing power on a character, you're doing something unknown. You're doing something new. Like as an example, Viego and Silas. Viego says, I literally turn into other people. Silas says, I steal ultimates. That is really new and unknown space. Both of those characters when they came into the game. So it's hard to be completely 100% confident that those things are going to be okay in the long run. And it's hard to be completely 100% confident that those things, we gave the characters the right trade-offs to have them, right? As an example with Viego, when he came out, he could build too tanky for having that passive. And that's why we did a, a bit of work on Viego to move power out of his bases and more into like his scalings, right? And it was kind of like saying, it's like, there's an amount of tankiness on Viego that if he's building it is actually very inappropriate with this passive. And we didn't get it right right when he came out. Had to, we had to change it to, make, to move him to more squishy builds to make that passive okay. And, and that kind of stuff is really, really hard. But if you don't get it right, on one end, you'll make very unfair characters that you know will probably need to be adjusted, and that's rough. And on the other end, you can you risk making characters that can't fight an audience and no one really enjoys because whenever someone plays it, they're like, "Why would I play this character? All these characters do other things." Um, I think Valorant has run into this over the years with um, characters like with a lot of their new agents versus some of their old agents. One of the things Valorant has run into is like one of the classic characters in their game is Jet. And Jet does a lot of really powerful and very unfair things a lot of the time. And some of Valorant's new agents, if you compare them to Jet, it's like, well, why would I play this agent when I could just play Jet? Here's all these hoops I have to jump through, and Jet just gets it for free. And you might say, well, that's because Jet's overpowered. But Jet's also really popular and really fun and really cool. And so I'm actually a really big fan of what Valorant did recently where something Valorant did recently is they went in and they looked at a lot of their duelists and they said, hey, what are various ways we could buff these duelists to have a bit more, you know, agency in their court, right? So that when they're compared to characters like Jet and Rays, they like are more like worthwhile to pick in different situations. It's like this complicated, this complicated web where characters need to find an audience and have things in their court. But then of course, if you go too far, you'll end up with a character that's like, very unbalanced and needs to be adjusted.